Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, so my name's Mark Patterson. I'm from eLife, um, but I'm the chair of the uh, organising committee for this conference. So I'd just like to welcome everybody to the eighth uh, conference on open access scholarly publishing. Um, so this is the first time, as uh, Roy said last night, it's the first time we've held this meeting in the US, uh, so it's fantastic to be here. Uh, it's taken us a little while because OASP is not a huge organization, so you know, we don't have a huge budget to, to play with, but as, the, um, as the, the membership has grown and the finances have improved over the past few years, we've steadily moved in a westerly direction. Um, we, we began uh, with some uh, fabulous venues, which were also really cost effective in Eastern Europe, and we've slowly moved west, and now we've finally taken the plunge, um, so to speak, and crossed the Atlantic to, uh, to, the, to the US. So it's great to be here. Now, one of the things that's really made this possible, so I want to say a few thank yous to begin with. So one of the things uh, that's made this possible is the support we've had from sponsors. So I want to say a big thank you to those. In particular, to Hindawi, um, uh, who sponsored the delegate bags, to PLOS, who sponsored the Wi-Fi. Um, and I just realized I took down the, uh, uh, the code for the Wi-Fi. Uh, what is it? PLOS, OK. <laughs> Could have guessed that, really. Um, also to Crossref um, for the lanyards and Sage for the pens and the Copyright Clearance Center for the uh, lovely uh, reception that we had last night. So, um, so many thanks to all the sponsors. So this year is also the biggest meeting we've had, and that's also helped uh, uh, make this possible. So um, it's not that much bigger than previous meetings, and it's great to see lots of uh, very familiar faces uh, at this conference, as well as many new faces as well. So um, I think the size of the conference is still very you know, conducive to lots of conversation and discussion, which is something that we've you know, seen in the OASPA conferences generally, and, I, and, and I'm sure that will continue. So um, uh, the, the, the next group I want to say thank you to is the, the other members of the committee who helped to organize the meeting. Uh, so Liz Ferguson from Wiley, Caroline Sutton from CoAction, and Katrina McCallum from PLOS. And the four of us have uh, worked together on this for the past three years. So this is our third, uh, third one of these. And it's been a, a huge amount of fun, actually, to work with that group. But we have decided this year that it is, you know, it is time to bring in some flesh, fresh blood, uh, so to speak, into the uh, conference organization. So uh, a few of us are stepping down for next year. And uh, I think Caroline's going to take over, though, as the chair of the meeting. Um, and we're bringing, bringing some fresh people. So many thanks to the, to, the, uh, to the other members of the committee, but also especially to uh, Claire Redhead, who is now the executive director of OASPA, and to Layla Williams, who's joined Claire as our second member of staff. Um, and uh, Layla is the um, events and uh, communications coordinator. And between them, they've just done a fantastic job in you know, making this whole thing happen. And as I'm sure all of you know who've been involved in conference organization, it can be a pretty sweaty and stressful task. So many thanks to them. And also uh, to uh, Cora from eLife and uh, Katie from BMJ as well, because they've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes uh, locally here uh, over the past day or so too. Um, a couple of logistical things uh, I've been asked to mention. Tonight, the dinner, uh, so I'd completely forgotten, but apparently we all chose main courses uh, a while ago. Uh, but don't worry, you don't have to remember because it's all been uh, carefully encoded on your badge. Uh, so there's a, a little sticker on your badge which uh, will tell the people serving what main course you're gonna get. Uh, so please make sure you bring your badge with you or you won't get a main course. Um, but if you don't have a, a little colored sticker on your badge, all is not lost. <coughs> You just have to go to the reception desk, uh, to the uh, registration desk, I mean, and, uh, and see uh, Layla or Claire, and they will, will sort you out with something. Um, now, what else do I have to say? Um, um, right, now I think that's, oh, oh yeah, so uh, one other thing. Um, yeah, so, so on the registration desk, there's a, a new thing this year, which is an ideas bowl. Uh, so this is for suggestions for OASPA 
generally, for the meeting, for webinars that we might hold, anything like that. So we're, you know, any and all feedback would be tremendously uh, helpful. So please uh, don't hold back and drop ideas into the ideas bowl. Um, the Twitter uh, hashtag for the meeting is COASP8, so tweet away, uh, please. And uh, the last thing, just wanted to say a couple of things about the program. We, got, we always gather feedback about the meeting, so we got fantastic feedback last year. Um, we pay attention to it. Um, so we got lots of suggestions just for the kind of logistical things as well as the subjects and so on. Uh, so one suggestion was uh, last year we had, there were no tables uh, in the conference, uh, and so pe some people like tables, so we have tables. Um, um, what else? Uh, the, uh, uh, we've tried to provide something for everyone, so we've kept the program really broad, covering all sorts of areas like you know, business models and sustainability, which is a, always a very uh, popular topic, but including innovation, infrastructure, policy, all sorts. So we hope there's something in here for everyone. We introduced a session last year, which was to have these really short, short and, and sharp talks about to introduce the posters. That was very popular, got lots of feedback from that, positive feedback, so we've kept that. We haven't added anything else uh, new in particular, but um, uh, I'm, you know, so I just want to wish you a, 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 an enjoyable two days, and so I um, hope it's uh, productive. And what I'd like to do now is hand over to Paul Peters, who's the president of ASPA, who's going to say a few words. Thank you, Mark. So uh, I'd like to start by welcoming everybody here. It's uh, very nice that uh, now that we've moved the meeting to the US, there's a lot of people who weren't previously able to come. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to spending the next couple of days catching up with a lot of you and uh, hope it goes well. I, I wanted to start this morning by talking a little bit about OASPA. Um, many of you are probably quite familiar with the organization, but at the same time, given how far we've come over the last eight years or so, I thought it would be helpful to just go through the history a little bit. So the origins of OASPO really started around 2007, 2008. And what we had found was there was a number of publishers engaged in open access um, that kept seeing each other at various meetings and we would uh, sort of naturally form into groups to talk about issues that, that were affecting us. And We'd sort of felt that although there are existing trade associations for publishers, that none of them were really serving the interests, uh, particularly of the open access community. So around that time, 2007, 2008, we decided that we would uh, form an association um, and, and sort of see what we could do uh, in terms of setting something up new. And the real mission initially uh, was to do three things. First of all was to share information, and there was, again, lots of things. It was sort of the origins and early days of open access, so it was helpful for us to be able to talk about licensing issues and funding issues and things like that. The second important point was setting standards, and, you know, this has been an issue throughout the history of open access, that there are bad actors and uh, sort of low-quality publishers working under the open access moniker, and so we felt right from the beginning that it was important to have some sort of vetting process and standard setting where we really establish what professional open access publishing should look like. And this has been an important theme throughout the, the history of the organization, that this is really something that takes up a lot of our time. It's a very intensive process. Uh, the membership uh, application process is uh, you know, very in-depth, and the success rate is, is quite low, uh, which I think is, is a good sign that we're, we're doing our jobs. Um, right now, uh, my guess is about 90% or so of the members that, or the companies that apply are being turned down because they don't meet some of the criteria. The third area uh, that, that we were also uh, looking to work on was advocating for open access because Certainly, uh, many of the other trade associations, uh, at least at that time, were quite resistant to a move towards open access. I think things are starting to change a bit as it's become a much more mainstream uh, model, but in the beginning, we felt that it was important to be able to communicate with funders, with universities, with policymakers, and really have a voice uh, for, for publishers that are uh, excited about OA and its possibilities. 
So for the first three or four years, uh, we were operating just as a voluntary board. Uh, there was no staff. Uh, you know, we, we really had our hands full just doing the, the basics, getting a bank account set up, creating a legal entity, um, and, and running the events. And then in 2012, we were very fortunate to have Claire Redhead come join us. And, you know, I think that's really helped us uh, expand the organization tremendously, having, you know, a full-time staff who's able to, you know, both handle a lot of the administrative work that we were doing, but also push us along, because as many of you who are on boards know, if, if you're just left to your own devices, it's very easy to let things just sit between board meetings. And so it was very helpful to have Claire come on board and, and um, really help drive the, the organization forward. Um, Looking at where we've come sort of recently, um, we just announced a few weeks ago, I guess, that we've passed our 100th member. And so, you know, going from 10 members back in 2008 up to 100 has been quite an expansion. Uh, as Mark mentioned, we uh, added a, a new staff member, Layla, and, you know, we're very excited about, again, having more bandwidth to get out and do things because I think there is a lot of appetite for OASPA to do more and more and more, and it really is just a matter of the internal bandwidth, uh, what, what, what we can engage in. So we're quite excited to have uh, Layla on board as well. Um, in terms of the sort of the growth of the organization has mirrored the growth in open access as well. Uh, when we were founded in 2008, uh, the total output of uh, articles in fully open access journals among our members was around 20,000 articles a year. As of last year, that had grown to 160,000 articles. So it's an eight-fold increase over about eight years. And so, you know, it, it's pretty impressive. It's now becoming really a core part of scholarly communication. And it's something that, again, back in 2007, 2008, there was a lot of people who had said it's never going to be more than a little fringe activity around the edges. So I'm glad to see, that, see that's uh, continuing to develop. Looking ahead, um, you know, we're starting to uh, try to decide which areas we want to move the organization in. And part of it is, is always going to be the main staples like this conference. Um, we've also been expanding out over the past year into webinars. Um, and, you know, the initial feedback we're getting is that that's really great to, for some of the members who can't make it to these meetings to really be able to engage on a regular basis. Um, similarly, we've been uh, getting more active in social media, having Twitter chats on uh, various topics related to open access. And so we certainly expect to continue with all of that. But uh, as Mark had said, I think it's now also time if, if any of the members have concrete ideas of what they'd like to see from the association, please come and let us know. Um, you know, this is a great opportunity to speak face to face. And if any of you have ideas of, you know, something that you think OASPA could really add value in, please come and let us know. So apart from that, all I'd like to do is uh, wish you guys a great conference. I hope it goes very well. I'm sure it will. The, uh, the program looks great. The facilities are, uh, seem excellent so far. And I guess I'll be turning it over now to Lars Bjorntauga. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Lars Bjornshauge. I am uh, managing director of the Directory of Open Access Journals, DOAJ, and I'm, I'm on the OASPA board. So having COASP here in North America for the first time, I cannot really think of a more appropriate thing to do than having as a keynote the executive director of, I guess, the most influential open access adv advocacy organization in North America. And having worked for Spark in Europe for a number of years, it is my great pleasure to introduce Spark's executive director, Heather Joseph, who will tell us about that it is not easy being open. Please, Heather, the floor is yours. <laughs> 